Good day, and welcome back to Chemistry Videos with me, Clarissa Sorensen Unruh. We are talking about synthesis today, and it's particularly organic synthesis, which is one of my favorite things to talk about. So let's talk about it for a little bit. What organic synthesis is, and many people would define it in many different ways. I think of it always as a puzzle. It's a puzzle. It's something that we do that we're piecing together the reactions that we know and we're trying to come up with some kind of way to get from something usually a little more simple or um, not quite right to something that's really kind of different. Um, and so in this case, I'm going to look at organic synthesis as putting together multiple reactions. to form a product from a simpler, for lack of a better term, simpler reactant. Now, simpler, where I go astray here in terms of saying simpler, is that simpler is might be true for going uh, from reactants to products in an organic synthesis in organic one. It could be even true in organic two. Sometimes the whole goal in organic synthesis is to make something more simple. So this doesn't always work, but it's kind of an okay defini definition for us at the moment as we're thinking about particularly organic one and probably organic two as well. This particular organic synthesis that we're gonna do is really out of organic one. Okay, so multiple reactions. The thing that's really interesting here is that when we say reactions, we often talk about steps in organic synthesis. And these arrows are actually designating the number of steps that it took me to get from one to the other, thinking through the reactions that you know. In terms of this, this becomes very confusing. The steps idea becomes very confusing because steps in organic synthesis mean individual reactions, reactions that have their own reagents, they have their own mechanisms. They have all kinds of things going on. And so when you look at steps in organic synthesis, that's very, very different than the steps in a mechanism. Steps in a mechanism are talking about electron pushing, pushing those electrons from one place to another, making the reaction happen in a way that kind of makes sense using the reagents that you're given. In terms of organic synthesis, this also should make sense, of course. <laughs> most of chemistry is logic. But in terms of this kind of idea, we're putting multiple reactions together. It's a little larger. If you had to do an organic synthesis that also had mechanisms drawn, you would, in this case, be writing out three different sets of reagents, three different products and reactants, and you would be drawing mechanisms for each of those, the electron pushing for each of them. A little bit larger. Okay, so let's talk about, let me erase this organic synthesis moment. And then let's talk about this particular reaction that I have going on up here. Okay, and organic synthesis, I think, is meant to be fun. I love organic synthesis. Anyone who's taken me before knows that I really, really enjoy organic synthesis. And that's because it gets a little bit closer to what you have to think through in terms of um, industry and such, right? And it also is a logic game, which I love logic games. Sudoku, crosswords, organic synthesis. That's what I find groovy. All right, so in terms of looking at this, you can either start an organic synthesis with the beginning or the end, or you can kind of start in the middle. Actually, that's three different starting places. Now, having said that, most people, when they're starting, start with the end. So basically what they're going to say is they're going to say something along the lines of how, what do I know right now in all of the reactions that I've learned that can make this, right? So in terms of what you know, what you know is you know how to make an alcohol like this. This is particularly a secondary alcohol. Secondary comes from the fact that the carbon that's bonded to the alcohol, right, bonded to the OH group, is bonded to two other carbons. That's where the secondary comes in. I know how to make a secondary alcohol from pretty much only one thing, and that's a double bond. 
right? So an alkene is how I've learned how to make an alcohol. I could have, by the way, this double bond here, or I could have it right here as well. I'm going to draw it here because it's a little bit more straightforward, okay, in terms of where we're going, okay? And you can say, actually, at this point, you could fill in the rest. If this is a double bond and this is an alcohol, then I need to figure out what kind of reaction this is. This double bond goes to this alcohol. The alcohol adds on the more substituted side. Therefore, it's called Markovnikov addition. And the only way I know how to do Markovnikov addition, I'll write that out, addition of an alcohol is with H2O and H2SO4 or really any strong acid. Okay, sometimes it's H2O and H3O plus, that's exactly the same thing in our minds. Okay, so adding water to this, along with a little bit of acid catalyst, will allow me to go from the double bond, the alkene, to the alcohol. That's awesome. Notice, I didn't do any electron pushing. Haven't done jack in terms of actually showing how this happens but I at least have what I began with, okay? Likewise, over here with an alkane, you don't know many reactions that will allow you to do anything with an alkane, right? So there just aren't a lot. Everything that we've learned has to have a multiple bond or it has to have something along those lines. It has to have at least a leaving group, right? So leaving groups in like, E1, E2, SN1, SN2, those are all the important kinds of ideas of what we're talking about. So, when you're looking at this, I can't just create a double bond out of nothing. I can't just go from here to here. I need something to pull off in order to create this, right? And so, what I need is I need a leaving group. And the most, um, ubiquitous one that I use is, of course, a radical reaction. Okay, so in that case, what is my radical reaction? Let's do this in pink while we're at it. Okay, the radical reaction adds Cl2 or Br2 using light. Okay, and that's going to be an uncontrolled reaction to some degree. Some people can control it. I mean, you can control it some, but it's not, you're going to make a whole lot of different products here. Um, pretty much you're going to pick the product that you think will get you where you need to go, right? So let's do, uh, we could either add the chlorine here. I'm going to do chlorine, by the way, because I saw chlorine first. I'm going to add the chlorine here. Or I'm going to add the chlorine there. Okay. Which one would be easier? It actually doesn't matter, guys. I'm just going to add it to that one. Right? Because I would want to add the chlorine to one side of the double bond. I'm going to add it as a primary leaving group. Okay, that allows me to do SN2, probably allows me to do some E2 as well. So I can have a concerted mechanism that gets me from one to the other. Okay? All right, so at this point, I figured out what I can do with an alkane. What I can do with an alkane? Not much at this point. Pretty much the only thing you can do with an alkane, if you start off with it, is stick a leaving group on it in some way, shape, or form. Lots of different leaving groups, lots of different ways to do that. My personal favorite being the radical reaction. Did I show a mechanism from going here? Did I show the steps in a radical reaction, the initiation, the propagation, or the termination steps? No, I didn't, because I don't care. Okay, I'm not doing mechanisms here. I'm just doing the synthesis. All right. In terms of getting from here to here, right? In order to get that leaving group off and a multiple bond to form, this is obviously an elimination reaction. You have two kinds of elimination reactions that you deal with. You have E1s and E2s. In the case of E1s, right, you have usually a, uh, the ones, right, in total, E1 and SN1 has some kind of carbocation intermediate. On here, this is a horrible place to put a carbocation intermediate because it's really, really super unstable. So the likelihood is that you're going to need to do an E2 
here and you're going to need to do a concerted reaction. The twos are much better on primary carbons if the leaving group is on a primary carbon. SN2 is easier, E2 is easier. And if I'm going to do E2, I probably should have a strong base. My favorite base to work with here is NaNH2, which is really a bit of a misnomer because we don't care about the Na, like at all. What we care about here is that this is an ionic compound that forms a anion, and that anion is a strong base. It is a strong nucleophile. And that's what we're looking for, right? We want to pluck off a hydrogen and make ammonia here. So when we do that, we want to pluck off that hydrogen. Usually we pluck off the hydrogen from the carbon next to the leaving group. And at the same time, we pluck off the hydrogen over here. We force this off, this chlorine off, and make the double bond. Okay, so talking through some mechanism there, not showing a darn thing. Okay, in terms of the actual mechanism that's needed. And that is how you begin to think about organic synthesis. You start at the end, you start at the beginning, you meet in the middle, you can actually do it entirely backwards, you can do it entirely forwards, you could take more steps than this. All of that is okay. It's just a matter of trying to get from that reactant to this product in as few of steps as you can think of. All right, until next time, we'll talk again. Adieu.